Well, this is John Black, Super Chemist. Now, I've put up a video called Abduction of JS JBSC, and that is a novel or no novella that I'm writing. Um, and I started it thinking if the channel takes off, I can publish self publish my book and try to sell it on the channel. So I put up a chapter or part of the first chapter. But it's very long, so I don't know if I'm going to... I mean, the channel is not going... I don't think it's going to make it, so I'm probably not going to self-publish. So I might just read the book out loud online and give it away for free. Um, I don't know. It's a long book, you know what I mean? This story here, Corruption with JBSC, it is a lot shorter. This is a fiction, so don't think it's true. Um... This is back in the 1990s, the early 90s. There was a big, I don't even remember exactly, but give or take 10 years, back in the early 90s, there was a big drought, and I mean a big drought for pot. Um, nobody had it, okay? Now, I live up north, and I was going down south. So I drove all the way down to the border, where it's easy to get pot, any kind of drugs, really. And to my dismay, guess what I found? The drought actually, I couldn't believe it. The drought actually was down there too. I mean, people right on the border didn't have any, any pot. Um, so instead of, you know, I usually got my few pounds of weed once a month down there and came back. I, had, I mean, that was my only income, so obviously I had to buy something, right? So I bought a quarter, quarter pound of uh, Coke. I don't really do coke at the time. I've never never done it, but it was like, oh, I'll just get a little bit just to get me by or whatever till next month, and the drought will be over. So I'm driving back up uh, with my stuff. Uh, it was only a QP, so I could easily put it in something small. It wasn't like pot where it takes up a lot of room. And I had it in a potato chip dip package if you've ever bought potato chip dip you'll know what i'm talking about it's uh, a round container that you can you know and i emptied all the dip out cleaned it out and i filled it with uh, rice to keep the cocaine you know nice and dry put the lid back on and then i had on the hump if you're sitting in my car you know in between the passenger and the driver sometimes there's a big hump there uh, I had a thing on there that was made to sit on that hump and then you, you could hold your drinks and it also had a thing that flipped up and you could put stuff in the container like and close the lid. <clears throat> That's where I put it. You'd lift up the lid, I put the, the uh, dip container in there and I closed the lid. So I have my cocaine, a quarter pound. I have two guns. Uh, I can't remember what kind. I, it was either a Beretta or a Raven I'd carry as a regular gun, and then I had a five-shot Dillinger, or a five-shot something, I can't remember what it was, um, in my boot, or in my uh, shoe. And I'm driving from south to north. Now, if you know about the drug trade or drug, tra drug trafficking, you'll know that uh, there's like an X over the United States, and that X is highways. Uh... You know, it goes from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast, okay? And uh, all the drug people take, I mean, it's the easiest route, you know what I mean? You want to take the highways all the way to the whatever, you know what I mean? And then there's also a plus sign and a square that goes around the United States. But we're not going to talk about that. So I'm taking the X, one of those X routes. And right where the X's combine... Boom, that's where all the traffickers are. Now you're coming from, you're crisscrossing from everywhere. And this particular place was, was Oklahoma. So I'm driving through Oklahoma, I think it was, I can't, I think it was Oklahoma. Anyways, let's call it Oklahoma. I get, I'm at a rest stop, right? Taking a little break. And in comes another car. 
And, uh, you know, I'm sitting in my car, and they get out, and they come over to my car. I'm starting to get paranoid now. I'm thinking, is someone going to jack me from my drugs or whatever? You know, someone came up south with me. And uh, so I'm getting my gun out, cocking it, getting ready to go, you know what I mean? And they just tap on the window. I'm like, what do you want, man? And he goes, oh, we're, it looks like you're going the same direction as us because of the plates you have. Do you think that... Uh, you know, we can drive together, and then uh, if one of us breaks down, the other one can help. You know what I mean? We can, you know, this was before cell phones. Uh, so I was like, of course, yeah, that sounds good. So we're driving, so now we kind of look like a convoy. I mean, there's only two of us, but we both have plates that are not good plates for this area. Uh, he had a California plate. I don't want to say what plate I had, but. We did, we did look uh, somewhat suspicious moving back and forth between each other. Um, but I don't think this is why I got pulled over. Let me tell you this. I go, I get pulled over. I'm going the speed limit. So I know I'm not getting pulled over for the speed limit. And he pulls me out. It's a, a military guy. It's a police officer. But later on in the story, I, I had him checked out. And I found out he was in the Marines. And he acted like that type of person, you know what I mean? A, you know, big guy, real big guy, you know, 6'6", six, six, you know, built. And uh, he had that attitude of, you know, I'm scum and he's great in America. You know, I'm like the scum of America. Like, you know, he's, and I'm terrible. So he asks me several times if he could search my car. Several times I tell him no until I get tired of it because I, I don't really take crap from cops. I mean, uh, I'll take it to a point. I'm always polite, but don't ask me something several times, dude, if I answered you already. So after the, you know, second or third, well, probably about the third time is usually when I get tired of answering the same question. I said, look, dude, you want to go in my car? I'm never going to give you permission. You're going to have to take your hands, put them in my pocket, get the keys out. And open it yourself. I will not even hand you the keys. And I don't give you permission. I told you that three times. So, of course, he just takes the keys. <laughs> so, he takes the keys out of my pocket. He un unlocks the trunk. Starts looking through it. He doesn't find anything. So, he tells me to stand over by his car. Like, on the grass part, not the highway part. And wait while well, he searches. He goes to the passenger side on the yard grass part, not the highway part. He's up and out the door. And I remember the cocaine is in a small, uh, uh, well, not small, regular size dip container inside my tray that's on the uh, hump of the car in between the passenger and the driver's side. And he finds that pretty much pretty fast. And I can see him. He sets it aside, <laughs> starts looking, 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 looking. This looking process probably takes some total about five minutes. Of course, to me, it feels like, you know, an hour. And several times he moves the dip container back and forth, back and forth, like out of his way <laughs> to, so that he can search my car. And uh, I still have my guns. So the guy, you know... I'm sitting there thinking, this guy is definitely, he isn't going to stop until he finds something. This is an obvious shakedown here. Um, you know. So I'm thinking, I have two guns. I can walk up and shoot, because he hasn't even watching me. He's not even looking at me. The only thing he cares about is finding something in my car. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, I can easily walk up behind this guy and shoot him in the back of the head. Even if he has cams on cameras in the car, and it, you know, I get caught dead to right, left to right, shooting him in the head. It's less time, actually, than, you know, transporting a tiny, tiny handful of fucking cocaine <clears throat> across state lines. It's, it's actually a lot less time. Um, I would actually be out pretty quick for murdering a cop. <clears throat> Maybe because it's a cop, I'd get extra. But, yeah, murdering a cop is nothing in time that you're going to do than transporting the smallest of, of cocaine. So I'm thinking about it, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, well, I mean, I have a 100% chance of getting caught here, even if there is no camera on the thing. I'm sure he called in my plates. 
You know what I mean? I'm going to get caught. Definitely, I shoot him. It's a hundred percent chance I'll be convicted. I don't. I won't have any loopholes to jump out of. This is the cocaine. If he finds the guns, well, you know, I have a possibility, a good possibility, of going to prison. But I do have a chance of, of getting out on a loophole. So anyways, I decide not to shoot him in the back of the head. I decide to just take my lumps, you know. Eventually, after moving this potato chip dip container back and forth about three or four times, I don't know why I never thought, well, wow, potato chip dip, that needs to be in the refrigerator. You know, you can't have it out in the hot sun or whatever, <laughs> or in a hot car. Uh, but he never thought of that, I guess. So he got tired of looking and couldn't find anything. So he finally opens up the dip container and he's like, oh, I got you. I got you. He's laughing. He's smiling. Oh, and then he puts me in cuffs. Oh, he's la now he's found the guns. He's laughing like crazy, right? Uh, he got me. He got me. So he takes me to, well, actually, I, I believe they had had the DEA come down and talk to me. They wanted to get me to see if they could get me to narc on anybody. And, you know, obviously I'm not going to narc on anybody. You know what I mean? If you do something, do your own time if you get caught. Jesus Christ, don't be a pussy fucking bitch. Uh, <clears throat> so anyways, after about five minutes with him, you know, because I get tired of telling people that, I, you know, because it's against the law. Once I say I want an attorney, it's against the law for a police officer or any law enforcement agency to keep asking me questions. It's literally against the law, okay? Uh, so when I tell them that, I say, uh, I'm, you know, I'm always polite. I'm like, look, dude, I understand it's your job, but I, I'm, I'm not answering no more questions. You know what I mean? This is, that's it. Then they kept going on. I was like, why are you breaking the law? Why are you being a criminal? That's what I always ask a cop. When they, when they break the law, after I tell them, I'm not talking. I'm done talking. You know what I mean? I told you whatever. That's it. Uh, I always ask, why are you breaking the law? You, you look at me like I'm a piece of garbage for breaking the law. But here you are breaking the law. That usually shuts them up right then and there. <laughs> so the DEA leaves this Oklahoma... Uh, highway patrol or whatever they call them down there, state police or whatever, takes me to the county jail. I mean the city jail, which is a little tiny jail. There's like two uh, blocks, uh, actually three blocks. One block, two the two blocks have like enough room to have maybe 12 people each. And the third block had maybe enough to have, they were single cells, but they were lined up all in a row, I guess, for uh, women and also for, uh, you know, if someone got out of hand, I guess they can put them in the single cells. <clears throat> so anyways, I'm in the one cell, I'm in the one block, I'm in, say, B block, but one of the bigger of the t three blocks, which was tiny as heck. I mean, there was no TV, you know, sometimes they'd put the radio on for us, uh, it was tiny as heck. So I'm in there. I'm obviously I'm scared. I'm whatever. I'm like, oh, man, this sucks. You know, I'm going to do it by the time here. And basically the first day, I, I, I'm going to go to sleep the whole day. So the next day I get up. Here comes the papers. The papers telling me what I got arrested for. Now, keep in mind, I had a quarter pound of cocaine and I had two guns. The arrest sheet says I had one gun and one ounce of cocaine. They actually said I had 29 grams. And the reason why they did that was because anything over an ounce or 28 grams in that state is automatic uh, transporting. It's automatic intent to deliver, meaning you're selling it. <coughs> uh, the guns, you know, he took all my, he stole just enough stuff to leave me with the same charges, whoever it was, right? So, I still have the gun charge, which at that time was my second gun charge, so it was a felony. <clears throat> I still got the, uh, don't miss part two.